Good day grade 11s. Welcome to this final lesson on Redox in grade 11. In this lesson we're going to be looking at examples of Redox reactions. So these are just examples of the types of Redox reactions you may have already come across or will definitely come across next year. So we're just going to really show you something to get a feel for what you should be experiencing. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> Good day grade 11s. In this lesson, we will investigate different redox reactions. In this experiment, we will investigate the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and potassium dichromate. We will need hydrogen sulfide, acidified potassium dichromate solution, two test tubes, one with a stopper containing a delivery tube. Please note that this experiment must be carried out in a fume cupboard. Hydrogen sulfide has a horrible rotten egg smell and is also very toxic. Note the acidified potassium dichromate color. It's orange. Acidified means that we have added some acid to the potassium dichromate. We now add the hydrogen sulfide to the acidified potassium dichromate. Can you see any changes? We see that the orange color has turned greenish brown. Let's discuss the theory behind this reaction. When we add hydrogen sulfide to acidified potassium dichromate, we observe a color change. Let's look at the net ionic reaction and see if we can work out what has happened. The net ionic reaction without spectator ions is dichromate plus 3 hydrogen sulfide plus 8 hydrogen ions goes to 2 chromium 3 plus ions plus 3 sulfur atoms plus 7 water molecules. I said that we have left out the spectator ions in this reaction. But what are spectator ions? A spectator ion is an ion that exists in the same form on both the reactant and product sides of the chemical reaction. This means that spectator ions do not take part in the reaction and therefore do not affect the equation. For example, in this reaction, potassium ions and potassium dichromate are spectator ions. Let's analyze this equation. We can calculate that the chromium atom in the dichromate ion has an oxidation number of plus 6, while on the product side of the chromium ion now has an oxidation number of plus 3. Since the oxidation number of the chromium ion has become less positive, it has gained electrons. Therefore, the chromium ion has been reduced. If we look at the sulfur ions, the ions change from minus 2 to 0 on the product side. The sulfur has become more positive, which tells us it has lost electrons. And therefore, the sulfur has been oxidized. Do you remember how the color changed from orange to greenish brown? The green brown color comes from the yellow sulfur which precipitated out and mixed with the orange of the dichromate ions and the green chromium ions. So we can see that the chromium atoms are reduced while the sulfur atoms are oxidized. We know that the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent. Therefore, we can say that the hydrogen sulfide has a reducing action on the potassium dichromate. In this experiment, we will investigate the reaction between potassium permanganate and hydrochloric acid. Let's cross to the lab to investigate this redox reaction. For this experiment, we need a gas cylinder with a greased cover slip, some potassium permanganate powder, a beaker, some warmed concentrated hydrochloric acid. Please note that this experiment should only be done by the teacher in a fume cupboard because the gas that is produced is poisonous. Also, concentrated hydrochloric acid is corrosive and can burn your eyes and skin. Please protect your eyes and wash with water if you splash any acid onto yourself. Now let's begin. Place some potassium permanganate powder in the gas cylinder. Now add a small amount of warm concentrated hydrochloric acid to the powder and cover with a greased cover slip. Do you see any change? 
you should also notice that a greenish yellow gas has formed. Let's discuss the theory further. In the reaction, when potassium permanganate reacts with warm concentrated hydrochloric acid, a greenish yellow gas forms. Let's look at the net ionic equation to see what has happened. 16 hydrogen ions, 2 permanganate ions, and 10 chloride ions react to form 2 manganese 2 plus ions, 5 chlorine molecules, and 8 water molecules. Let's analyze the changes in oxidation numbers. The chloride ions go from minus 1 to 0. Remember, we know that elements have an oxidation number of 0. Therefore, the chloride ion has lost an electron and has become more positive. The chloride ion has been oxidized. By the way, do you remember the greenish yellow gas we saw? The greenish yellow gas was the chlorine gas that was formed in this reaction. We can calculate that the manganese in the permanganate ion has an oxidation number of plus 7. While on the product side of the reaction, the manganese ion has an oxidation number of plus 2. So the manganese has changed from plus 7 to plus 2. Eventually, when all the permanganate ions have reacted, the purple color disappears. The permanganate has gained electrons and has therefore been reduced. So the chloride ions have been oxidized by the potassium permanganate. Well, now you have seen some of the fascinating color changes that occur in redox reactions. Right, grade 11s, I hope that you enjoyed looking at those experiments. The whole point of this video was not to scare you with the horrible, scary equations, but to really give you an idea of what type of redox reactions they can, you will come across both this year and next year. Um, and next year when we do redox again, we will it will introduce you to the redox table and we'll provide you with half reactions that will help you understand how to solve those redox re equations much more easily. But in the meantime, please go do the assessments at the end of the section in the turnable system. Have a great day.